Migo, Hound of Tindalos, The Color Out of Space, Mythos Creatures. So far we have discussed three Mythos species in detail and mentioned multiple others, but there are a plethora of different alien creatures within the universe. Much like the Great Old One Roundup, we will not cover all the various species within the Mythos, but I'll cover some of the more popular ones. The Migo are extraterrestrial beings hailing from Yugath, which some believe to be Pluto, although it's unclear whether this is their home planet or merely their nearest outpost to Earth. The Migo resemble winged crustaceans about five feet long, with membranous wings and a fungoid head. They arrived on Earth during the Jurassic period, fending off attacks from the Elder Things and settling in the Northern Hemisphere. The creatures mine certain minerals from our planet and use them to grow the fungi they use as food. The Migo's intentions and thought processes are alien to us, but they don't appear to be overtly hostile to humanity. One such tool that they have invented in order to assist with their studying of species is known as a brain cylinder. Through surgery, which the species has supposedly mastered, they can remove a creature's living brain and transplant it into a metal cylinder, keeping it in suspended animation. Using various apparatuses, the brain can observe and interact with its surroundings. Most notably, however, is that the Migo use these cylinders to transport minds across space, and potentially to other dimensions. They reserve this treatment for those they particularly favor, or despise. Hounds of Tindalos may not resemble hounds at all, as the name may refer instead to their habits rather than their appearance. The immortal hounds originate in a different time, or perhaps a different dimension entirely. They have descended through angled time, which is opposed to our normal curved time. It is speculated, then, that they are opposed to yogg sothoth who is master of our curved time. The hounds are capable of seeing and traveling through time, and they keep watch for anyone seeking to look through a time other than their own. After a hound of Tindalos catches the scent of someone meddling with time, they will pursue them back to their present time. Here, they can only enter our physical dimension through an angle, such as the corner of a room. Upon reaching their victim, they devour them, leaving behind a strange blue substance. The color out of space is one of my favorite alien species in the mythos, and was featured in Lovecraft's story of the same name. The color is sentient, and fully grown it manifests as pure color. It doesn't appear as a gas, or as a solid, but as something insubstantial in between. They arrive on planets in the form of a meteorite, although their true form is contained within small, fragile globules within the meteor. The meteorite themselves, as well as the color, are completely alien to our understanding of chemistry and biology. Most notably, the color possesses mutagenic properties, altering plants, animals, and even the environment around it in strange ways. Crops grow large but foul in taste. Animals become malformed and driven violently mad. Eventually, most things around it grow gray and brittle, crumbling away to dust. When the color has absorbed enough energy, it blasts off from the surface, leaving an area devoid of life. Flying polyps are one of the more violent species in the mythos, warring with both the Elder Things and the great race of Yith. Their actual name is unknown, as flying polyp is merely a description. They are capable of flight despite lacking wings, can turn invisible at will, and seem to have some control over the wind. They were fended off by both the Elder Things and Yithians, but eventually destroyed the Yithians after they jumped their minds into the future beetle race. Supposedly, a small number of the polyps still reside in deep caverns within the Earth. Chthonians are immense, slimy, squid-like creatures with short tentacles that are capable of burrowing through rock. The process by which they burrow seems to melt the stone while traveling through it. Adult Chthonians are also capable of causing significant earthquakes, though whether this is incidental or on purpose is unknown. The 1906 San Francisco earthquake is credited to one or more Chthonians. They are also capable of withstanding temperatures up to 4,000 degrees Celsius, and thus live close to the core of the planet, only occasionally wandering towards the surface. The entire species can communicate with each other telepathically, and they worship the greatest of their species, Shudamel. Other species include Haster's space-flying servants, the Biaki, 
Nyar Lethotep's black-winged serpentine hunting horrors, and the transparent star vampires, which are only visible as they are drinking the blood of a victim. Many sci-fi universes contain a myriad of different alien species, but few are as unique and horrifying as those in the Cthulhu mythos. Aliens in the mythos are truly, well, alien.